Today on the No Beauty and Cruelty podcast, we'll be joined by special guest PJ, the owner of the Roots Foundation in Exeter. Throughout today's podcast, PJ will be answering a few of our questions on animal testing and his vegan business. What is the Roots Foundation and what is your role in the business? My name is PJ and I am the owner of the Roots Foundation. The Roots Foundation is the UK's first fully vegan barbershop and social space established in 2017. We stand for positivity, inclusivity and compassion. Veganism runs through all aspects of our business, uh, primarily in the products that we use and stock, but also uh, in uh, the chairs that we use. They are non-leather chairs, um, all the refreshments that we serve in the shop, toiletries that are used in the shop and catering for any uh, events that we have as part of our social space. Um, All the events that we uh, host uh, align with our values of positivity, inclusivity and compassion. So we have hosted things like film screenings, live music, uh, interactive theatre. We even hosted an animal rights law conference. Uh, Yeah, a a whole variety of stuff. How has your past experiences of working in animal rights impacted your business practices? So my journey into animal rights really was uh, through punk rock. Uh, I'm a born and bred punk rocker and I went vegetarian at the age of 17. Um, It was just something that uh, felt like the right thing to do. I just one day was like, you know what? It just doesn't feel right to be eating animals anymore. I don't want to participate in that anymore. Uh, so I, I just stopped overnight and it was absolutely fine. Um, and then veganism came a little bit later. I, I joined uh, my animal rights group at university, um, which was great, um, and ended up going vegan a few uh, years later at the age of 20. Um, my first full-time job was then at PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, uh, where I worked for approximately a year. Um, and although I was the administrator there, I also took part in a lot of activism there, some nonviolent uh, forms of protest um, and direct action. Um, and ever since then, I have continued uh, in, in my activism in my, my everyday life, whether that's fundraising, benefit shows, protests. Um, so it really only made sense that any business I set up was always going to be a vegan business uh, just to align with how I live in my everyday life. In your opinion, what defines a cruelty-free brand? So there there are lots of uh, vegan brands or brands that make some of their products vegan, uh, whether that's deliberate or accidental. Um, But at Roots, uh, we have four criteria um, that kind of go a little bit beyond uh, a product only being vegan. So our four criteria um, are that a product needs to obviously be vegan, it needs to be handmade, it needs to be all natural and it also needs to be non-gendered. Um, and the reason for that is because I feel that veganism uh, should be intersectional and it, sh- it should be and is linked uh, with other struggles. Um, so we found that nothing or no brand in the UK matched those four criteria. Um, so that led to me starting my own brand, Hell Yes!, uh, which um, I, I got into um, creating uh, various products over lockdown, t- teaching myself uh, how to how to make them and um, uh, do my do my own research to create my own recipes. Um, as I say, we just found that there wasn't anything in the UK uh, that was that was matching the four criteria that we needed. So hell yes is a fully DIY affair. Uh, I hand make everything myself on Four Street in Exeter. How would you recommend other businesses make the switch to cruelty-free products? So the first thing I would say is look into why you think you should stock vegan products. Uh, Research what goes on in the animal exploitation industry, whether that's to do with testing or how animals are used, uh, farmed and exploited for cosmetic ingredients. Um, But those criteria might be different for other businesses uh, and they might find other avenues into cruelty-free vegan products um, like, you know, finding a commercial brand to stock that that isn't necessarily handmade. Maybe that's not important to to someone else's business. Uh, They they prefer to prioritize just like make sure it's vegan. And that's okay. It's about what works for you and your circumstances. 
Thank you so much, PJ, for joining us on the No Beauty and Cruelty podcast. It's been really great to hear how your business in Exeter is fighting for animal rights through vegan products, which is what we stand for here at the No Beauty and Cruelty podcast. So thank you for joining us and see you next time. (laughs) 